Hey everybody, I'm Graham, candy connoisseur, and I'm here to talk about individuality. Individuality is discovering who you are meant to be so that you can make a difference. Every single one of us is an individual. We were all made by God in our own unique ways. When you look at yourself in a mirror, you can see all the work that went into making every little detail. I see you. And it's not just what you look like that makes you an individual. Your whole personality sets you apart from everyone else in the world. You should really look at yourself sometime. Really look at yourself inside and out. Like when I look at myself, I think I'm pretty cool. Like a big bowl of ice cream. Uh, and there are things about myself that I like. I love that I'm good at problem solving. I have this ability to understand when something is wrong and immediately think of ideas to fix it. Oh, and I like that I'm funny. Like, have you ever heard of this one? Knock, knock. Oh, right. <laughs> I need someone in the room for that joke. Anyways, I, the punchline is, I didn't know you could yodel. Oh, I think I'm funny. Actually, now that I'm really looking, I'm thinking there are some things that I don't like about myself. Like, sometimes I procrastinate. That means when there's something that needs to be done by a certain time, Sometimes I wait till the last possible minute to get it done. Oh, and sometimes I have a bad temper. When someone disagrees with me about certain things, I can get really angry really fast. Uh, him? Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I can be really selfish. There, a little cool a little gross, and a lot messy. That's how I can see myself sometimes. Maybe you see yourself that way. Well, after today's story, you might discover that there's a whole new way to see yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm really gonna eat that. See, I'm funny. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 9. Verses 9 through 13. Everyone in the shore town of Capernaum knew who Matthew was. You may also call me Levi. But few people actually liked him. Well, that's rude. Truth is, Matthew had put himself in an awkward situation. He was Jewish, like his relatives and friends, but he chose to work for the hated Roman government. Just trying to make a living. Matthew was a tax collector for the Romans, and tax collectors were known to lie about the amount of money people owed. Five gold pieces. But, but it was only three last year. Five, and not a shekel less. After collecting money, the tax collectors would keep the extra for themselves. Many of them grew rich by robbing the poorest people in their towns. In fact, tax collectors and sinners were considered to be the same thing. Hey, I work hard. But no matter how hard Matthew tried to polish his own image, deep down, he knew how others saw him. He heard their whispers as he crossed to the other side of the street to pass his booth. I do not know how that man sleeps at night. He's the worst, doing the Romans' dirty work. But one day, the crowds of Capernaum were full of different news. Did you hear about Jesus of Nazareth? The rabbi? He's not only a teacher. This morning, he made a lame man walk. That's just talk. My son was there. He saw it with his own eyes. The whole city was ablaze with the story. And even Matthew, who was tucked away in his tax collector's booth, was fascinated. Maybe the man just had a limp or something? Oh no, this Jesus has real power. He cares about people. Well, maybe. Anyhow, you owe three gold pieces. Three? How are we supposed to eat for the rest of the season? Take it up with the governor. I'm just doing my job. I bet Jesus would have something to say to you. Next. 
Within a short time, the market became even more crowded. Jesus! Jesus is coming this way! From his booth, Matthew craned to see. Though he was curious, deep down, he had to admit that no rabbi would have kind words for him. I'm a fool. Even my own people hate me. Suddenly, the crowds parted. Just down the street, Matthew could see a tall man with a rugged face and piercing eyes. A group of common fishermen followed at his heels. It's Jesus. Matthew watched, waiting for the rabbi to pass him by. Instead, Jesus stopped right in front of Matthew's booth. Um, rabbi? Jesus looked directly at Matthew, reading every single thought in his heart. Nice day. Not too hot. Not too cold. Jesus kept his gaze fixed directly on Matthew's face. Come, follow me. Shocked, Matthew looked around. The crowd has fallen away. Who? Me? Jesus nodded. Matthew gaped. He had no doubt in his mind that Jesus knew every single thing about him, even everything he'd done wrong. But still, Jesus wanted Matthew to join him. Oh, well, yes. Matthew found himself leaping up from his seat and rushing out of his booth to join Jesus on the street. It's, um, nearly dinner time. Would you like to eat at my house? To Matthew's amazement, Jesus and his followers turned their steps towards Matthew's home. Quickly, Matthew sent out word to everyone he knew. Come to my house for dinner. Matthew, who had expected to eat alone, found himself hosting the most famous rabbi in town for dinner, along with a ragtag group of fishermen, tax collectors, and other outcasts. Jesus doesn't care what I've done. He thinks I can be better, that I'm worthy to follow him. But while Matthew rejoiced to discover his brand new identity, the city's religious leaders were horrified by what Jesus had done. They sidled up to Jesus' disciples. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? You know, that's a great question. Jesus overheard the religious leaders and answered the question himself. Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Preposterous. From then on, Matthew followed Jesus everywhere. With his own eyes, he had seen more of the things that Jesus had done than nearly anyone else. Near the end of his life, he wrote down all the stories he had witnessed and gathered so that others too could know Jesus. Before he was one of Jesus' disciples, Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors were kind of known for cheating people out of their money. Other people would have called Matthew a sinner, and it would have been true. Matthew, like everyone else in the world, sinned. Which means he did things that God wouldn't want him to do. I wonder if Matthew saw himself this way. A little gross? A little messy? He might have felt ashamed even worthless. But then something happened. He met Jesus. Jesus chose Matthew to follow him even though Matthew sometimes did things he shouldn't. Even though he was a sinner. Jesus wants you to follow him too. He wants you to know him and trust him. And it doesn't matter what you've done or how you see yourself. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for your sins. You are forgiven and he loves you just as you are, mess and all. It's almost like when Jesus looks at you, he sees through the mess. He sees past your mistakes. He sees the individual you that God created. When you believe in and follow Jesus, it can help you see yourself through his eyes. Mmm, and it's so much better that way. The one thing to remember today is this. Knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. I definitely like myself a lot better without mayonnaise. Blech. <laughs> mm. I'll see you next time. <laughs>